full of play. It hasn't been quite so wacky in the games here, but we'll see what tonight brings as the Terriers win the opening tip. Well, instead of wacky, we've got madness. That's what happens when we turn <laughs> the calendar, and you know both teams are ready to show up. I can feel it. Can I, you feel the I'm madness? I'm ready. Let's go. All right. You wait all season for these games. Walter White launches the first shot, and the Terriers have a quick 3-0 lead. Well, Walter White last game went 3 for 14 from the field, 1 for 9 from three-point range. So great start for him, lining that one up right off the opening tip. And that, it didn't take long for the Terriers to get the first bucket. That game Saturday at Bucknell, in fact, was Walter's worst shooting game of the year from the floor. Quickly trying to make up for that and be a presence here in the early going. Kenny Jones with the penetration and score. Well, Kenny Jones has been really the leading scorer for this Loyola team the last three games. He's been the most consistent scorer, averaging nearly 16 a game. He's now 20 of 33 from the field in his last three plus. There's that zone now off the made basket. Walter White again, this time with the turnaround, Jay. Well, again, as you get into playoff time, this is the, you know, the occasion where, especially a team that has a lot of experience, you hope that they're not coming in shy to this one. They, they, you can see Walter White being extremely aggressive right at the start here. Cam Spencer is on the board, the Patriots League, Patriot League's leading scorer at just under 19 points a game. Well, Spencer that time dipped in under the curl and got the elbow jumper. The Terriers want to keep him off the three-point line, giving up those twos, but they got to be harder than that. Too strong off the glass for Fletcher Tynan. Souk Matone in on the rebound with Golden DK, and it's called a hell ball. It'll go to Loyola. And the Terriers crashing the offensive glass, so off the first miss of the game for the Terriers, they were trying to hit the glass, but Golden DK did a good job. That's going to be a fun matchup, DK versus Matone. Two big bodies that like to rebound the basketball and can mix it up on the offensive glass, too. And talking about Spencer leading the league in scoring, Brian, this is the fourth year under Tavares Hardy as head coach. All four years, Loyola has had the leading scorer in the league. It was two years of Andrew Costeca and then Santi Aldama, who's now in the NBA last year. And I think what's interesting to add on to that is both those players have led them in steals, too. That was going to be a shot clock violation anyway because... Faure lost track of the clock, as did the rest of the Greyhounds. Well, we mentioned at the beginning that it's really going to be defensive stops for the Terriers. And there's your first sequence where all of a sudden, Loyola is BU is able to guard both, guard all five on the switches, and they're able to get the stop. Tynan. They really come out on that zone. So it's a, you know, it's a 3-2 zone. They'll press and then try to get back into it. White loops a dangerous pass into Matone, and that's a turnover. So after two great buckets by Walter White, those are the careless errors that can be costly. Underneath Faure with a mismatch on White, but he keeps it moving. And Spencer gets a great look at a three to give Loyola their first lead. Well, Loyola, when they overload that right side with Jones and Spencer, that's tough because the Terriers in their rotations, they've got to fly out to somebody. All you have to do is make the extra pass, and you're going to have a great shooter getting an open look. So Spencer's got five early points. Matone gets a touch in the post, hounded by DK. Harper to the reposting Matone, working very hard for that shot. It doesn't fall, and it's out of bounds off Loyola. And credit Jalen Andrews. He's done a nice job ball denial on Javante McCoy. McCoy hasn't even gotten a touch yet in this game. Just over three minutes played here at the roof. Happy to have you with us on ESPN Plus, the Patriot League quarterfinals. It's the third Patriot League tournament meeting between these two teams. The Terriers have won the first two, both of them here. And Jav uh, Jonas Harper gets fouled on the baseline drive. Kenny Jones picks up his first personal as it was a good look on the inbounds that Jonas Harper, again, using his left hand, going baseline and just being aggressive. And the Terriers will go to the free throw line. First free throws of the game for either side. BU won a 2017 quarterfinal matchup here against Loyola. And then a first round matchup in 2019 here against the Greyhounds. Overall, the Terriers lead this series 14 to 7. These teams played only one time prior to both joining the Patriot League in 2013. 
and they did meet up in the 2013 CIT tournament. That was down in Baltimore, in which Loyola beat the Terriers. So that one will not count in the Patriot League world, but certainly they've met before in postseason play. That's actually true. I, the one meeting came in the regular season. They have actually met twice. Aside from that, they met in the CIT and also in a bracket buster right. game back in 2012. Great defense down in the low post on DK by the Terriers, and Jonas Harper ties up DK for a hell ball. This one will go to BU. And, and that, I Harper, love the energy. There's the energy. The Terriers, DK in the middle of it. He's trying just to get out of that, and the Terriers do a great job of kind of just pushing him out. But there's two guards on the switch getting in the middle of it and causing the tie-up. Jonas Harper, who is not a member of the all-defensive team this year, but making a play for it right here. Well, we should also mention that Suk Matone, in addition to being the player of the year, yep. also automatically goes on the first team All-Patriot League, and he was also chosen on the All-Defensive team his second time in a row on the team. Fletcher tied it inside with the reverse. What a pass by Suk Matone. Elbow, horns action, and just let your guys move without the basketball. Quickly into the front court are the Greyhounds. BU, who is out of the first round for the seventh time out of their nine years, they entered the Patriot League with Loyola. This is their first time out of the first round game, playing in the quarterfinal directly as the sixth seed. Yeah, this is Loyola's highest seed yeah. in their nine years in the Patriot League. Happy to avoid that first round for the first time. Shot clock at five. Loyola's lost track of the clock again. Kenny Jones at the buzzer hits it. Well, Jones now with two buckets, Spencer with two buckets. This is a guard-oriented lineup between Spencer, Jones, and Jalen Andrews, who has really been focused on defense. He is the one guarding Javante McCoy for most of that first segment, and he did a terrific job on Javante. There's Javante with a deep three, and he is on the board with a little freedom to shoot. Well, I was going to say, you're going to give him freedom when he's five feet beyond the three-point <laughs> line, but Javante, there's playoff Javante. We talk about it, we joke about it. Last two games, 20-plus points. The previous bucket by Kenny Jones was a two. So BU leads by two at 11-9. Jalen Andrews guarded closely by Walter White, but fouled by Walter, and Andrews will get a chance at a three-point play. Well, just as we said, Andrews and Javante, the two players who are part of their own big three that hadn't scored, they have back-to-back -back buckets here. Javante with that big three, and now Andrews a chance for a three-point play. Andrews averaging nearly 14 points and four rebounds a game as he completes the three-point play. So we've had several lead changes here in the opening minutes of this Patriot League quarterfinal. Now Loyola up by one. Loyola, perfect five for five from the field to start. Both teams shooting red hot, four of six of the Terriers. Javante, great pass underneath. Suk Matone does not get the roll, but he will get two free throws. What a pass by McCoy. Uh, and again, that's where Javante can be, he was so great in that game in Baltimore that it wasn't just his scoring. He ended up with eight rebounds and seven assists in that game in the Terriers' 17-point win, and that was just a beautiful no-look pass to Suk Matone, and Javante was trying to give it as much English as possible to get that one to fall in. He and Suk both. Instead, Matone will have to earn it from the free throw line. Suk coming into this game with 837 career rebounds. That's third on the BU all-time list. He is ninth on the Patriot League all-time rebounding list. His next checkpoint would be Matt Wilson, who's sitting in eighth place. And Souk still among the national leaders in a number of categories as well. And also we can talk about his season rebounding numbers. He's close to being in the BU's all-time, all top seven in season rebounds. And on top of all that, he's a good free throw shooter too. <laughs> Makes both of those and the Terriers get the lead back. And that's something that again, down the stretch, that he was kind of looking over the bench in one of the games down the stretch of the season. It was a tougher night shooting from the free throw line. Suk at 77% at the line as Golden DK travels. That was just a great play by Malcolm Chemezi. He was staying with him and DK did, wasn't expecting to have a body right there when he turned around and moved his pivot foot, got called for the travel and DK will come out. And now the other Illich brother, we mentioned that Milos is out in this one with a sprained knee. Velko Illich off the bench. And how about this? Velko and Milos both average the same points and rebounds. Yep, well that must twins. be a twin thing. Yeah, I, I don't get it. It is a twin it. thing. 
it's funny, it's almost eerie how similar their statistics are, except for the minutes played. Milos has actually played a lot more minutes, but he is out now with the injury. This is the fourth game in a row that he's missed. And Velko coming off the bench, two different kinds of player. Velko really more of that true 4-5 man. Milos is really a pop, a pick and pop kind of shooter. And if Velko looks a little younger, it's because he's five minutes younger. <laughs> I'd love to be able to tell what the difference in five minutes is. <laughs> Javante all the way to the rack for two more. Well, after he hit that three, comes right back with the layup. He's got five consecutive for the Terriers after Walter White started the game with five straight. BU by three. Brown's jumper, and it falls for him. David Brown the third, true freshman from La Plata, Maryland on the board. Well, bench points are something that Tavares Hardy has been dying for. They've been outscored 107 to 45 as the Loyola bench over the last four games. And we know the, the other side of that coin for the Terriers, when BU's bench outscores the opponent's bench, they are undefeated this season at 11-0 as Walter White hits the mid-range jumper again. And, and in this game, again, the Terriers are still looking for their big three. That'll be the same for Loyola, but it's those chip-in points that the bench can really provide, especially a lift when they're playing those minutes trying to give the starters a breather. Jones finds the open man, Brown, underneath, but he's quickly covered by Kalen Jones. Good recovery that time by Jones, who was screened. Shot clock in single digits again, and Andrews misfires. Chemezi muscles McCoy out of the way for the rebound. Well, if Javante comes up sore tomorrow, we know why. You <laughs> ran into a brick wall. And if the case there, it is just a common foul on the other side here, but that was on the previous possession. Ethan Britton Watts, Kalen Jones, Fletcher Tynan, Malcolm Chemezi, and Jonas Harper on the floor now for BU, and that'll be a charge on Fletcher Tynan. Yep, lower the shoulder as he started the drive. The Terriers have been asking for more from Fletcher being aggressive, and Fletcher over the last six games has scored five or more points, but that time lowered the shoulder when he started the drive with the left hand, an easy call to make, but more importantly, that's number two on Fletcher Tynan, and for Tynan, this is a guy the Terriers, you know, look for him as a defensive spark plug, a guy that's also helping to guard Jalen Andrews, so we'll see how he gets his minutes the rest of the first half. Terriers can't afford to have him sit for all 12 and a half minutes. Walter White comes back in, replacing Tynan. And a little pressure from Ethan Britton Watts as Kenny Jones will try to bring it up for Loyola. EBW and Jonas Harper, when they are locked in defensively, you'll see him start slapping the floor. They, they get pumped up by that. Spencer. And the post pass deflected away by Matone. Three on two for the Terriers. And Ethan Britton walks ahead of the field. Oh, uh, well, what a pass by Jonas Harper. So the steal was by Suk Matone. Jonas Harper picks the ball up, leads the fast break with a beautiful thread of the needle to the pass to EBW. And the Terriers taking advantage of transition opportunities. That's how Loyola cashes in. Terriers have only had two turnovers through the first part of this half. Cam Spencer with the runner, and he's got the shooter's touch, doesn't he? Oh, he has a soft touch wherever he is. We saw the elbow jumper. It didn't even look like he had to elevate on that jump shot earlier, and this time in the middle of the lane. Corner three for Kalen Jones doesn't go. He hit two of them in Bucknell after not scoring the previous five games, so certainly felt good for Kalen to kind of get back to see the ball go through the net. This one just a little long from the left corner. DK kicks it out of the post. Jones with the cross-court pass. Jalen Andrews with a tough shot. <laughs> what a jump stop in the paint for Jalen Andrews. Uh, Kalen Jones got away with a foul. There was some physical play in there, and Andrews still got that to knock down. Jonas Harper saves the ball, gets it into Matone. Nice up fake by Jonas on Spencer and Matone for the easy two. Well, I'll say this, Jonas Harper, the last two possessions, is the point guard out there right now. He has been able to move the ball, and the Terriers have been able to move without it to get open positions, and Suk gets this first bucket. Well, I'm suspecting that before this night is over, Brian, as you said in the open, we will see more tight defense, but right now, the offenses are running the show here almost 10 minutes in. Oh, you could just say I'm wrong right now, Doug. That was a really nice way of putting well, it. Well, we've seen a lot of games, though, where, you know, it starts up and down like this, and then it really slows oh, down later. Oh, it clamps down. And there's yeah. a lot of energy in this building at the start of this playoff game. Short on the three is Walter White. 
Walter, who knocked down his first one, that one, he looked like he had an open look and just kind of short-armed it as Kenny Jones slowing it down. The Terriers do a good job getting back. Loyola, they want to run. They want to be able to create turnovers. They're number one in steals and number one in turnover margin in the Patriot League. Spencer drawing a ton of attention from the Terrier defense. That laid Kenny Jones open to drive, but he couldn't hit it. The follow is no good by Faure, and now the Terriers have it. Walter White almost tipped that ball in himself on the rebound. He was trying to play keep away from DK. And that's gonna be a turnover on EBW as he bumped into Cam Spencer and lost the ball out of bounds. That'll bring us to a timeout with 9.36 to go in the first here in Boston. BU by three. This is the Patriot League Tournament on ESPN. The Patriot League Player of the Year gets his first field goal of the playoffs. And a nice feed by Jonas Harper. Prior to the game, he was honored. Head coach Joe Jones right there to award the plaque to him as Zook Matone. What a season. The first to average a double-double since Tunji Joby in the mid-90s. As you see some of the numbers he had, including the double-doubles. 21 career double-doubles for him. 16 this season. He is a true a true testament to growth over the course of your college career. And hard work. Uh, he changed his body type, he changed yep. his nutrition value, and then he changed, he transformed his game into something else, and it has earned him the Patriot League Player of the Year and the Terriers with a three-point lead midway through the first half. In addition to being in the top 10 in the country in double-doubles, he's also third in the country in offensive rebounds, and he's 12th overall in rebounds, and of course he's still averaging a double-double this season as Cam Spencer brings Loyola within one. Miles Brewster in the game of the first half. I think that tells you about what the Terriers need, which is defense right now. Miles Brewster guarding Cam Spencer, and Spencer just able to muscle up against him. Spencer has nine already in the game. The largest lead for either team to this point was five for BU just a few minutes ago. Javante McCoy couldn't finish that time. Beautiful move going back to his right hand, just a little hard on the glass. BU does a nice job getting back on defense. Spencer over Brewster, can't hit it. Big rebound though for David Brown. Back inside for DK and he swoops in with the lefty shot. DK, his first field goal attempt and David Brown who was the starter the last three games coming off the bench and man, did he sky to get that offensive rebound, the second offensive board for Loyola. So coming out of the timeout, back-to-back -back hoops for the Greyhounds, and they retake the lead. That is the seventh lead change, and there's the eighth lead change as Javante McCoy hits again. I have a feeling we're gonna see a few more. I, I will take that bet in this one, that between these two teams right now, they are just going back-to-back -back for buckets here. DK with an explosion down the lane, and that's gonna be an offensive foul on DK. That's his first. Suk Matone fired up about that call after it was made. Uh, Suk, they got the lower the shoulder on that one, but Suk Matone, I mean, he also tripped. He fell down, and everyone worried about the floor cracking between those <laughs> two guys. Everyone up, and DK still has a few words and a few questions for Evan Burrows about the call. Suk down low. Going to work on DK, and the hook shot is good. Suk Matone has six now. And that time Spencer looked like he was gonna come over and help as part of the man-to-man, -man, but he didn't come all the way, and that allowed Suk Matone seeing that and then realized he could go one-on-one -on -one against DK. DK holding. Terriers have forced Loyola late in the shot clock on a number of occasions already. And they are doing it again here at three, at two. Spencer with the circus shot that doesn't hit anything. Great defense by the Terriers, staying glued to their man, and Miles Brewster one-on-one -on -one with Spencer and said just stay in front of him, force a tough two, and that's what he did. Oh, a great move by Javante McCoy, but he couldn't finish it. Uh, it looks like he's come up a little short on, his, on two of those when he's gotten into the lane. We talk about finesse, and we saw Spencer get a friendly roll. Uh, Javante just coming up short on a couple of them. Kenneth Jones with a crossover of his own, but he can't finish it. Gets the rebound, though. And in the corner, David Brown has his shot rim out. 
Well, Jonas Harper got away with a non-call. The third seeded Boston University Terriers leading the six seeded Loyola Greyhounds. Loyola started Patriot League play five and one, their best start since joining the conference, but finished it three and nine. Yeah, these teams kind of had opposite seasons yeah. in that regard. The Terriers got off to a two and four start and then went nine and three the rest of the way. Although they're coming off a bad loss at Bucknell on Saturday as Fletcher Tynan back in with his two fouls and he misses the corner three. Uh, so we were wondering, he did end up getting six minutes of breather time, but out here right now to get under the four minute media timeout, give the Terriers an extra few minutes with his two personals. Illich back in the game, Velko Illich for Loyola. Wade Jackson, his first appearance for Loyola out there. Andrews tried to get it to Illich posting, but took the three instead, and that's off the mark. Good job by Chemezi fronting Illich that time, would not allow that pass in. The Terriers doing their work up front and not having to just try to D up once the ball goes into the low block. Under six minutes to go in this first half now, three fouls on BU, five on Loyola. Javante McCoy getting into the paint again, and this time with the pull-up. He's got nine. He matches Cam Spencer as what do you expect? The number two and number three scorers in the conference. They're putting on the show here in the quarterfinals. Suk Matone, the other member of the first team All-Patriot League in this game, getting a rest right now on the Terrier bench, and there's going to be a foul on Miles Brewster on the baseline. And let me correct myself, Cam Spencer, number one in the conference in scoring, and Javante, number three. It's Andrew Funk who's right in the middle of them. Bucknell on the road, they are taking on Colgate. They won their first round game as the number nine seed, and they are down by 15 in the early going of that one in Hamilton, New York. As great a career as Cam Spencer is having for the Greyhounds, his brother, so far, still had a better one. <laughs> His brother Pat, a four-time All-American in lacrosse. The feed underneath and the miss, and a disgusted Kenny Jones underneath. You're not helping their dinner conversations when they get together, are you? You're the <laughs> instigator. Javante loses his footing and then loses the ball, and Andrews is going to get tied up. That'll be a hell ball. It'll go to Loyola. So Pat Spencer, who graduated Loyola in 2019, four-time All-American in lacrosse, the Tawarton Award winner, the lacrosse Heisman Trophy, if you will, in his senior year. Chris Kuzempa, Kuzempka also in the game for Loyola as Tavares Hardy trying to mix and match some guards right now. Kuzemka, his first game of the season this year was against BU when the Terriers played in Baltimore. Great high school player in Virginia as Cam Spencer is now in double figures. He's got 11. And Spencer just getting to a spot, getting to 14 feet. The Terriers, they, again, they don't want him to get really going from beyond the arc, but Spencer just putting on a display from inside. Chemezi protecting the ball. Great ball denial by Jalen Andrews. Took that away, did not allow J Javante McCoy to get it. That is a matchup to continue to watch. Jalen Andrews guarding Javante McCoy. It'll stay at this end, BU ball. Tough place for the Terriers to inbound. Deep in the corner, not on the baseline, still on the sideline in front of Loyola's bench. All right, well, that just made it too easy. <laughs> <laughs> it can be tough. It if wasn't was, that tough. If this was second half with three that's seconds right. to go, that's that would have right. been harder. Yes, that's true. Oh, great feed from Harper to Chemezi for the flush. What a pass by Jonas Harper. Uh, I mean, he just soft tosses it to him. He just lays that one out, and that is a beautiful look. Jonas Harper has had three of those plays. The orchestrator in this game is Jonas Harper. 29-24, BU matching its largest lead at five. Kenny Jones misfires the three. Just one for seven from the field for Loyola, their last seven shots. Are you looking to extend if they can? The turnaround for McCoy, and the crowd is thoroughly into this one here at the roof. Well, again, putting on a show, and now Loyola, let's see if Tavares Hardy calls a timeout here. They're trying to get over the timeline and get settled. And instead, they turn it over. Three on two for BU and a foul. Leading that game by five with under three minutes to go in the first half there. If Navy wins tonight, they would host the semifinal. If American springs the upset, then whoever wins this game would host the semifinal. Oh, twisting 
Reverse move by Jalen Andrews. Uh, you know, they have let both teams be physical with one another, and Jalen Andrews just rising to the occasion. That was an unbelievable one-on-one -on -one move against Jonas Harper. He has a couple inches on him, and he took advantage, and somehow with his back to the basket, finished. We'll have to see now, Brian, the rest of this half, if Loyola can kind of reestablish some sort of command in this game, because before that timeout and that offensive foul on Jonas Harper, the Terriers were starting to generate some crowd and a run uh, and extend the lead. They got it up to seven. Yeah, it was a 10-2 run by the Terriers, and you know Loyola able to answer with that last bucket to try to bring them back within two possessions. Oh, Souk Matone doing all the work, but he can't finish. Oh, beautiful drop step, looking for the contact, and then goes around it, just couldn't finish. From the corner, Kenny Jones draws rain with the three, but it doesn't go. And what do you know, McCoy, a weak side rebound. That's where he has just been taking his game to a different level in the second half of the season on the glass. Terriers do a great job getting up the floor quickly against Lehigh, hoping to beat the defense. Matone throws a shoulder, that's gonna be a charge on Sue. Now they're, again, they're being physical. Both sides are being physical, and that's where you gotta keep your emotions in check. No doubt that was an offensive foul. Sue threw DK to the floor. Now I know Suk's frustrated saying, well, DK was bodying, he may have been it may have been hitting him, but that's where, again, the Terriers, you've got to have that composure of you don't make it blatant like that one was. First foul on Suk, six fouls on each team now. Spencer trying to fight off Ethan Britton Watts. Now on the switch, Ethan takes Andrews. Spencer, shot clock at eight. From the baseline, rims out this time. Uh, Jonas Harper staying with him, but Spencer still able to elevate over him, and the Terriers get a miss from him. Sue piling up those rebounds in this first half, and Walter White gets into the paint for two more. He's got nine. Well, right now, Loyola Maryland's doing something that Colgate did a lot of in the game in Hamilton, New York. They're looking to take charges. The Terriers go into the rim, so that time DK was in there. Walter White had to avoid the charge to put that shot off. Both teams have their use it or lose it timeout available. We'll see if either one uses it as Spencer misfires on the three. DK able to track it down. The three for Jackson is off target. Wade Jackson, a sophomore who just checked into the game. Well, Loyola is hearing footsteps. Even after an offensive rebound, they were playing five on four. Under a minute to go in the half. Terriers with a chance for a two for one here. Boy, he could play a little bit. Uh, right now, Tavares Hardy is saying, I may keep him out of there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what the Terriers dial up here from the timeout. McCoy gets fouled. That's going to be a one and one as Jalen Andrews was trying to stick to Javante and he stuck a little too close. So now, based off of this, Doug, you're right. The Terriers will get the ball back, so they end up with the three for one right now. We'll see if they take advantage of that. That mm -hmm. was the only part you did not include, yes. though. Well, just because you get the three for one doesn't mean you're going to take advantage That's of That's right. It. So now Javante to the free throw line where he's got 11 points in this first half, matching Cam Spencer. And, you know, we said it in the first, we said in the pregame that the stars are out when it comes to the scorers. And I was focusing on defense, but those two don't like that. So they decided to, we're going to put up some points in this game. Well, the pace has definitely slowed down yes. some since the first 10 minutes, though. And Loyola has shot now under 50%. They're at 44% from the field as they had gone again. They're, they're right now scoreless now the last two and a half minutes, and we mentioned they're just two for their last 10 from the field. Javante McCoy. Hits both free throws, and BU's lead is now up to nine. That's their largest. Loyola's largest lead, just two. Yeah, after all those lead changes, it was eight lead changes, and I joked that that wouldn't be the last, and, well, I <laughs> may have to stand corrected for right now after the first half. Long way to go still Absolutely. here in this one. We've seen that this year, if nothing else. The long runs by either, either team. BU had a 25-0 run against them. Oh, how about that move by Foray? He faked the pass and then went in for the dunk. And now Tavares Hardy calls a very rare use it or lose it timeout after a basket in the final minute of the first half. I was just saying, you can do it to set up your defense. And what do you know? And I mean, you might as well because now it becomes a dead ball. So you're going to see Loyola come out in their zone. It's going to be a pressure on the on the pass in, and then they'll go back into the zone. You get another look at that play. Fowry, oh, great fake on Suk. 
they were so focused on DK that Valere was just a little bit of fake. And this is something we talked about all season. Some of the Terrier turnovers, which by the way, BU has seven turnovers in this first half. Some of BU's turnovers have just been, they haven't really used any deception in their passes. Well, you see what happens when you can use deception. Valere just getting right to the rim with the shaker. So we'll see what the Terriers come up with here on what could be the final possession of the half. That was not a Joe Jones dance move, by the way. He is trying to say <laughs> what he thought was a foul and what wasn't. <laughs> if it is a dance move, then. <laughs> Great pressure by Loyola. The Terriers get it across. Down to eight. McCoy will take it himself and lay it in with two seconds to go. And that's. Uh, be you tonight. Um, I think they forced some uh, shot clock violations earlier in the game. You can kind of see Loyola looks uncomfortable on the offensive side of the ball. It seemed like the offenses were very much in charge early in this game. Would you expect that to maybe swing a little more toward the defenses at both ends in this half? Well, maybe not, as Walter White drills a three. Right, I was going to say yes to that question, but you know, you see Walt knocking down another shot there. Um, you know, I'm sure both coaches at halftime got on their teams about the offensive production um, on either side, but. Uh, Obviously, the defensive component as well. Um, you see these guys fighting, and I expect the defense to pick up in the second half. First double-digit lead of this game for either team. It goes to the Terriers. Jalen Andrews answers with the turnaround. Only two players in the game have two fouls coming out for the second half. Kenny Jones has two for Loyola, and Fletcher Tynan has two. He picked up his two in the first eight minutes of this game. Javante from the baseline, he is so tough. Yeah, I've been really impressed with Javante as well. Obviously a first team selection, um, well deserved. And obviously we've been able to see what he's done in the past couple of years, but I think this year, um, you know, even taking that trajectory even further, really stepping up his game, uh, and leading these Terriers to a uh, good regular season. Kenny Jones is able to answer. Boy, the offenses don't seem to have slowed down much <laughs> after the break. Not at all. When we get a chance here, Max, we already talked about it during the first half. We showed you in the crowd enjoying the game as Fletcher Tynan misses inside. But obviously, it's great to see you here as Cam Spencer takes a great feed from Kenny Jones for the easy two. And just like that, Loyola back with an eight. But I'm sure you're happy to be anywhere after the ordeal you had trying to get out of Ukraine where you were playing this season. Right, a uh, really unfortunate situation. Um, it's kind of been a whirlwind two or three weeks uh, leading up to my departure. Um, obviously, you've been following the news. You see the situation over there, everything that's going on. Um, you know, every day I worry for my friends, teammates, coaches that are still there. Um, I worry for their safety and you know their situation as they continue to, to deal with the situation over there. Walter White misses the late shot clock three. And we should mention that your team was based in Kharkiv, which is one of the cities that seems to have been hit the hardest. Yeah, unfortunately, the past two days especially. Um, you know, I think I mentioned earlier that uh, a lot of fans that I keep in touch with, you know, just through Instagram, supporters of the team, um, have even sent me some videos, first-hand accounts of what's going on in the city um, as I ask them how things are and how things are going. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really unfortunate. Some of these fans, young fans too, um, the situation they're in, maybe they don't fully understand. Cam Spencer finds Jalen Andrews. That three misses Souk Matone with a big rebound as Loyola had a chance to make it a two possession game there. Three minutes played in the second half, chatting with former BU great Max Mahoney, who would fit right in with this team because it's all old guys. That's so, right, that's know. right. Some of these guys <laughs> older than me. I know Souk is older than me, Javante is as well. Underneath Fletcher Tyne, and that won't count though, the foul on the floor. What advantage, or maybe disadvantage, do you think it is that most of these guys played on that championship team with you two years ago? Yeah, obviously I think the experience is a huge part of that. Um, even now you see Javante and Sue talking it over, um, really leading these guys, leading the charge. Um, I think having that much experience and, and a deep bench as well, you know, this, this Terrier bench has done a great job this year, I thought. Um, some of these younger guys come in, give them good minutes when needed. Um, I'm not sure what the downside might be, maybe some achy joints, um, <laughs> <laughs> some, something, something like that, but uh, I've been impressed. I think these guys look good. Jonas Harper can't hit the reverse, but how about the tip by Souk Matone? Souk has eight points now, and BU has a 10-point lead again. 
And Souk on the glass this year has just been unbelievable. I know you guys probably talk a lot about the, his rebounding production, where he stands in the country. Incredible. Great backdoor cut, though, by Spencer at the other end. Loyola will not go away. Remember, they beat the Terriers here in the first meeting of the season before BU went down to Baltimore and dominated down there, a game that featured a 25-point unanswered run for BU. Mm -hmm. Matone has it slapped away, gets it back. Harper off the heel, and Loyola with another chance to get closer. Kenny Jones, tough fall away. You often find that, I, I often think that in these conference tournaments, no matter what your seed is, mm -hmm. and the Terriers are obviously the higher seed here as McCoy hits the jumper, that the first game is the toughest game. Absolutely. You know, I was talking with Coach earlier. I was able to attend the shoot-around this afternoon. Um, and, you know, we, we talked about it's hard enough to win games, to win a single game, especially in this league where, where obviously, if you followed. Oh, um, great feed again inside. This time, David Brown converts. You know, the past couple years where any, anybody can, seems like anybody can beat anybody. Um, you know, winning games is hard. Winning games consistently is especially hard. And down the stretch here, winning three straight games to capture the title is extremely difficult. Everyone's bringing their best game. On Tuesday night in the first round, as Souk Matone gets the roll on the hook shot, in the first round on Tuesday night, both road teams won. That's, right, that's yep. the first time that's ever happened that right? wow. since, the t since the tournament expanded to 10 teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that home court advantage, especially down the stretch um, in these playoffs, comes in handy. I know you mentioned the crowd tonight for BU has been fantastic, very loud. Kenny Jones with the left-hand layup. Our thanks again to Max Mahoney for sitting in. That was a lot of fun. And thanks to you, Brian, for helping set that up and allowing him to sit in. Max told me that he's always wanted to do a broadcast. So. I, I was told by BU Athletics that I'm still getting my full rate for the game. So, you oh, know, there's good. there's wins for this as well. <laughs> <laughs> BU leading by eight after stretching it out to 12 a couple of times here early in the second half. Miles Brewster back in the game and left open for the jumper. Oh, that time Cam Spencer was guarding Brewster and just kind of played off of him. He thought Miles was going to drive all the way to the rim, stops at the free throw line, and Miles drops it in. David Brown the third, short on the three. Nice save by Illich, but he saved it right to Miles Brewster. Uh, Brown has been so active off the bench. He's been a spark, just couldn't get that one to go down. Jonas Harper drills a three. That's his first bucket of the game. He now has four points, and BU's largest lead is 13. And again, the Terriers get the rebound, even though it looked like Loyola was going to have a second possession. That turnover costly. Boy, Loyola still getting a lot of easy buckets, though, here in the second half. Well, it's the same play. It's using their big man to come out to the elbow, and they're using him to set the screen and running off that action. And the Terriers have just gotten picked apart. I'm curious to see if they switch to a 2-3 zone. They did that in Baltimore for a couple of occasions. Javante McCoy with the smooth jumper, and he now has 21 points tonight. That is his third straight 20-plus point game. Uh, this is playoff Javante at his best. It's just so easy for him. Eight for 10 from the field. He's only taken one three-point shot. He's only gotten to the line twice. Long before now, still was scored in a tournament game as the Terriers get the steal off the pass in, and McCoy is fouled by Cam Spencer. And the Terriers taking advantage of the turnover. Again, that's the big opportunity. That's something that Loyola has likes to feast on. The Terriers have not allowed it, even though they've had 10 turnovers. As you get another look, just off the inbounds, Fowre took his eye off the ball as he did have an open layup. There have been some open looks in the second half. I mentioned that BU and Loyola last played in the Patriot League tournament in a first round game here three years ago. Javante McCoy had 30 points that night and that is still his career high. Now he likes playing against Loyola, and he certainly likes playing in the postseason, so put them together, and this is the kind of performance you're getting. Chemezi working on Illich, loses it, and the Terriers turn it over. And that's one of those ter turnovers that the Terriers have not had a lot of, just kind of unforced turnovers where it's just kind of being a little sloppy with the ball. 
Spencer gets bumped in midair. The shot doesn't go. The foul will be on Miles Brewster. And it's costly. That turnover is yep. costly. It's immediate free throws right now. And, you know, the Terriers, this is the point of the game with 12.08. This game goes one of two ways. The Terriers can blow this open as you get under the eight-minute media timeout, or Loyola is able to get right back into it, make it an eight, nine-point game, and then you're going down the stretch in what you expect to be a three-possession game. Right now, all four home teams are leading in the Patriot League quarterfinal matchups. We'll have an update on the scores a little bit later. And that's after the two first round games were won by the road team. Right. Welcome to the Patriot League playoffs, folks. <laughs> you try to make sense of it, because I can't. Well, the interesting thing is, over the years, since BU joined the Patriot League, Brian, home teams have won 69% of the tournament games. But this year, not starting out that way. But certainly the quarterfinals resurrecting that as there, there is such a thing you expect to have as a home court advantage. The two free throws by Spencer, bringing Loyola within 11. Suk Matone looking on, or working on DK, now posting. Takes the contact, spins, and good defense by DK in low. Yeah, Sukmatone looked like he lost that going up. I, you know, that was great hands, just keeping him up by DK. And Suk, I don't know if he kind of thought, didn't know where he was. It looked like he lost the ball going up. Crowd or urging the Terriers on here, and they get the steal as Harper gets it on the baseline. Walter White ahead of the field. Well, the Terriers right now winning the battle, points off turnovers. Actually, it's 11-10, so basically even now, as that was a big contributing factor to what Loyola does. That's where their offense stems from. White now with 14 in the game for BU. They have three in double figures. DK battling with Matone, and the foul will be on Souk. That'll tend their lead here in the second half. Now, Doug and Brian, take it away. All right, Jacob, thank you. Loyola is still shooting 50% for the game, and they continue to shoot well as DK gets good position inside, but the Terriers are still shooting 65% for this game. Normally, Brian, when a team shoots a crazy percentage like BU did in the first half, you say, well, it can't last, but it's lasted now almost halfway through the second half. Well, that's what you want to see from the Terriers. You know, playing, putting it together for 40 minutes. We've seen the Terriers have great halves, but this is one you want to extend to 40. Miles Brewster can't hit the three. DK and Souk, they're throwing bodies around, and Souk right now is not happy. He has not gotten the benefit of a couple of the whistles. Getting back to Jacob's point a minute ago, Kalen, or rather Cam Spencer, with 19 of Loyola's 46 points. Nobody else in double figures. Harper misses. Matone with the second chance, and he gets the contact from Golden DK. Well, there's your offensive rebound. Four offensive boards now in the game, and Souk's got a couple of them, and he keeps another possession alive. As you look again at that block by Walter White, he got beat on, again, it's the back cut. They, they have been so good with the back cut, but Walter White making up the space. Ten minutes to go in the game, and as Harper throws the entry pass, to Matone, another foul on DK. That'll be three on him. Uh, DK, we mentioned that these two have been very physical, and now they are not allowing the back and forth that has been happening between Suk Matone and DK. We promised that that was going to be another fun matchup, and the Terrier Big Three, they have combined now for 45 points, and we've mentioned Cam Spencer a lot for Loyola. Th this, is, this is what he does all year. Brewster has his pass tipped and stolen by Spencer. That's what Loyola does. And that's what Spencer does. What is his 68th assist now of the season? Three of the top five on the Patriot League steals list are on this Loyola team. Spencer leads the league in steals. Andrews is third, and Jones is fifth. And the Terriers trying to steal it back, and they'll get a hell ball here. It'll stay with Loyola. By the way, we mentioned Fletcher Tynan, who had those two fouls at the 12-minute mark of the first half. He has not picked up one since and has played some good minutes. And the Terriers in the second half, they've looked for that. Again, another defensive spark plug, although this game, we're still waiting for more defensive stops. Both teams red-hot shooting over 56% here in the second half. 
Taylon Jones will enter for the Terriers. He'll replace Miles Brewster. From the baseline, out to Andrews. Working on Jones, and he gets fouled by Taylon Jones. Off the under, out of bounds. The pass goes into Jalen Andrews, and he's going one-on-one -on -one against Kalen Jones, and just decides to go again. There's no help. Jonas Harper tried to come in later, but that was a one-on-one -on -one guard move right off the under, out of bounds. Andrews at the line, where he is a 72% shooter. Andrews is really part of the big three for Loyola, Maryland. We mentioned Cam Spencer, Jalen Andrews, and Kenny Jones. Kenny Jones in this one has struggled. Four for 10 from the field, has eight points. He's been the one averaging about 16 the last three games. So the big three for the Terriers have all been kind of in their full swing and double figures. Not the case for the Greyhounds. One for two at the line for Andrews, and there's another steal by Andrews, and he is fouled by Fletcher Tynan. So there's your third foul on Fletcher. And, and another steal for Loyola. Yeah, I was gonna say another good careless ball handling situation for the Terriers. We've seen a little bit more of that here in the second half. We talked about this Terrier team putting it together for 40 minutes. Offensively, they're still shooting well, but these turnovers, and I had said before the break, I think this is a pivotal part getting down to the eight minute mark here. And right now it's Loyola who's been able to chip away at that deficit and kind of now they have a chance to get it back to single figures. That's 12 turnovers now for BU in this game. Terriers lead by 10. Kenny Jones trying to cut into that lead. Cannot do it, but a second chance for the Greyhounds. That was a bad shot, quick shot by Kenny Jones. They were lucky DK got the offensive board. Jones with it. Screen, crunching screen from DK. Shot clock at five. Andrews working on Jones. Tough fall away, can't hit it. A third chance though for Loyola on this trip. That's Cam Spencer digging it out. So again, the leading scorer helping out getting another possession here. Faure with a brick off the glass and the Terriers finally get the ball. Well, in that situation, in that entire possession, you've got to question some of the shot selection by Loyola. Terriers maintain their 10 point lead. DK now playing with three fouls and Suit goes right at him. Yeah, there it is, uh, on the miss, the Terriers get back. They are moving quickly back and, and not even in transition, just getting back with the basketball. And Suk beats everyone down the floor and seals his defender. Eight minutes to go at the roof in this Patriot League quarterfinal. Faure drives baseline. Tough pass, tough pass into the corner. Great hands by Spencer to catch it. Shot clock already down to eight. Andrews with a lane and it gets stripped away. The Terriers create a turnover that time. Yeah, I think it was Javante who got in there and was able to knock that one away. Javante McCoy playing off the ball to start this possession. Gets his shot and hits his shot. Nothing new there. 23 for Javante McCoy. There is no shot in this game right now. That is not his shot, Doug. <laughs> that, that's the night it's been. 10 of 12 from the field for Javante McCoy. Largest lead of the night for the Terriers at 14 after Loyola appeared to be ready to cut into that lead a little bit more, but that possession where they had three chances and could not score could prove to be costly. Yeah, big segment. This is you know the chance to kind of put this one away. Jones can't hit the three. Suk Matone saves the possession. Carriers can grind some more clock here. Senior producer for BU Athletics, Leo Paré, and senior producer for the College of Communication, Christopher Cavallari, a big, big thank you and shout out to our entire crew, largely a student crew. As I mentioned, they do yeoman work strictly on a volunteer basis here for every home game. And regardless of how this game turns out, this will be our last game with the BU TV 10 crew on ESPN Plus this season. Every year, we, they just continue to add more and more to the broadcast. And every year, these students are getting not only a great education in production, but also how to deal with us. And they do a fantastic <laughs> job with it, year in and year out. And by us, you mean you. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, th I thought we were a duo now. Now I see how this goes. That off the travel on Walter White, it could have been an offensive foul, but now Walter yeah. going back to the 
end of the BU bench, and uh, certainly will get looked at there. It's kind of looked like he uh, kind of rolled his ankle on that play. He's going to have a conversation with BU athletic trainer Jessica Pierce over behind the bench. Loyola trying to ignite something to stay in this down the stretch, and the foul will be called, and that's going to go on Illich. Yeah. So it goes the other way. Velko Illich picks up his second personal over the back as Suk Matone in perfect position, and Suk gets his 11th rebound of the game. Interestingly enough, Suk Matone has finished with 13 rebounds in three of the last four contests. Why you finish on that number 13, that's been what he's gotten, but today another double-double, his 22nd of the season, a uh, 22nd of his career, 17th of the season. We should mention that however many games the Terriers play the rest of the way after tonight, Brian and I will have them, of course on the Terrier Sports Radio Network. You can always find the link on the BU website, the athletics page, goterriers.com, or on the BU basketball schedule page. So if the Terriers bring this one to the finish line, and they now lead by 16, their largest lead of the night, if the Terriers do advance to Sunday's semifinal, Brian and I will have the call either at 145 or 345 Eastern time as Illich gets loose inside and he'll go to the line. Ill-advised foul that time. At that point, you just either going for a hard foul or you let it go. Jonas Harper picks up his third and that was that was a soft foul and he knows it as well. Jonas, of course, very always eager to get the strip steal, but this one costs him possibly three. And right now, as you look across the Patriot League quarterfinal day here, the home team, all of all four home teams have double figure leads. Yep as they are all winding down the stretch in the second half. They all started at the same 7 p.m. Eastern time. And if this was to continue at this pace, the Terriers still with six minutes to go, a lot of time left. The Terriers, the number three seed, would be at number two, Navy, in Annapolis on Sunday afternoon. Yeah, right now, Navy leading American 58-47 with just over five minutes to play at Alumni Hall. And the Terriers now you can't just stop playing, but you also want to use the clock as well. Tynan Great gets pass. it to Souk. And what a move by Souk Matone as he took the freshman Velko Illich to school. Illich is still figuring out where Souk Matone went on that play. As Souk with an array of moves and then goes back to that drop step. That's just a pretty finish. Souk's got 14. That's almost unfair. A fifth year veteran Patriot League player of the year against a true freshman. And you see who took the advantage of it. And again, it just looked like you didn't have to be in quick speed, but for Velko, it just took took too long. Elich trying to get something at the other end, can't hit that shot. And McCoy gets fouled as he comes out of the pack with the rebound. It'll be a one and one for Javante McCoy, the 18th foul. And the Terriers, they are smelling it with five minutes to go here. But again, even when you're at home, you have to put a team away. There's no such thing as a, just a gimme. But take a look at this move once again. First to the left, back, excuse me, first to the right, back to the left side, and Miles Brewster doing the dance for him. If Miles had the ball there, that would have been a travel. Should mention, Brian, uh, while we have a second here, we talked about Loyola having to play in the first round of the Patriot League tournament every year until this year. Yeah. Well, technically last year because they got a walkover over Holy Cross when they had a positive test in Tier 1. But then that, strangely, launched Loyola on a remarkable Patriot League tournament run last year. They got all the way to the final before losing at Colgate in the championship game. And they had never been even to the semifinal before last year. Well, a reminder that Cam Spencer came back late in the season after the hip injury. And then they also had a guy who was pretty good, too, Santi Aldama, yep. that uh, got healthy at the right time as well. And it was just a perfect storm for Loyola. Terriers get into the front court. Before that run last year, Loyola was 0-5 on the road in Patriot League tournament games, but they won two games on the road last year. They knocked out the number one seed, Navy, and then they knocked out the number four seed, Army, on the road. Fletcher Tynan saves the possession, and Javante McCoy nails the triple, and nails may be the operative word there as the lead is back up to 15. 
That's what you call the oopsie play. Fletcher Tynan fakes <laughs> like he's losing the ball and pass it out to the open shooter. That's how you draw it up, right? I didn't know there was a name for that play. I'm calling it whatever sounds good <laughs> at this point. <laughs> but the Terriers will take it. Again, Javante McCoy, just another miraculous night here at the roof in terms of his scoring in the playoffs. Great move by Spencer with the up fake. Who's it going to be on? Souk or Jonas is the question. They got Souk. 341 to go in this one. The Terriers perhaps that far away from advancing to the semifinals. We'll be back with the last 341 in Boston after a break on ESPN. Javante McCoy has now played 33 minutes in this game, which means he stands alone atop the BU's all-time record for minutes played. He passes John Papali, who happens to be in the stands tonight, 4,320 minutes on those knees. And Javante McCoy <laughs> has found the fountain of youth in this one, 26 points on 11 of 13 from the field. We should look around a little bit more, Brian. John Papali, Max Mahoney, we're working on a pretty good team in the stands here for this one. Well, what you're also saying is that I really have no job coming up if they all get on air. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Now I'm a little fearful. You let one guy on, you've opened the gates. <laughs> Spencer at the line after the third foul on Souk Matone. Under four minutes to go in Annapolis as well. Navy leading American only by nine now though, 62-53. And Spencer makes both. Spencer now has 24 points in this game. And again, Cam Spencer has done his part. He has not gotten help from the other two as DK tried to come in and steal that ball. Andrews with 10 and Jones with eight. They need more from those two to match what the Terriers' big three has done. Boy, if I'm one of those BU cheerleaders on the end line there, I do not want to see a full sprint golden DK coming straight at me going for the loose ball. Uh, we mentioned before, when DK and Souk Matone hit the floor, I mean, that, that you could hear that from here. We're wearing headsets. <laughs> But again, Loyola right now, it kind of in that situation, the desperation mode where they are trying to get turnovers and they are coming together right now. I think they want to make sure to see if that'll allow Fletcher to run the baseline. Loyola still just two of 16, Brian, from three-point land in this game. Loyola averages seven threes a game, about the same as the Terriers average. And the game they won here, they only attempted 10 threes. They right. were able to do it with points in the paint. Terriers have got to be careful with the ball. And let's see, a timeout. Ten nope, 10-second ten ten call. Yep, there's the turnover. So the Terriers, and this is where I'm curious as you get down the stretch, see if we'll see more other ball handlers into the game. The Terriers want to just break the pressure right now. And that's going to be the biggest thing, getting it over the timeline. Ethan Britton Watts and the Terriers also have other guys off the bench, Miles Brewster, that can help bring the ball up the floor. BU is still shooting 64% from the floor in this game. Incredible, they've been able to keep that pace for the entire night so far. Spencer trapped in deep, and he turns it over. And now off the turnover, that's where Loyola cannot pressure. They want the dead ball so they can pressure. Terriers get the ball over the timeline. And again, you're just looking to get a couple more baskets here. Still three minutes to go. The next foul on BU would send Loyola into the one and one. BU has six fouls. Loyola has eight right now. Under three minutes to go. DK has three fouls. Souk backing in, and there's four on DK. And he can't believe it. Oh, that he pushed him out far. I mean, they, again, they, those two have had a battle. We mentioned Souk, who has kind of had, you know, uh, had pain in his back all season. This doesn't help. <laughs> Just get running into that. That's not going to help you at all. But again, his ability to feel for contact, and uh, that's something I think that has also impressed me with Souk Matone and his kind of maturation process, is he's got such a more feel for the game, feeling where that contact is and then turning away from it. But now trying to get one of these free throws to go down. He got two, misses the first one, he'll go again. Souk, 16 points to go along with 12 rebounds. Walter White, 14 points to go along with six rebounds. And Javante McCoy with 26. So the three combining for 56 out of the 68 points. Souk, make, Souk <laughs> makes the correction. He's now five of six at the line in this game. BU with a nine-man rotation for this game. Only nine players have entered. 
Anthony Morales and Garrett Pasco have not played the last two, three games because of various nagging injuries. And obviously, you're, in most situations, your rotation gets shorter at tournament time anyway, as DK this time draws the foul on Souk Matone, and I believe that's four on Souk. It is. Oh, this kind of reminds you, you know, there have been so many games where you think of big men that just, they just want to battle. And right now, this is what it is. And they are matching each other foul for foul. Certainly, uh, Souk Matone has had the advantage in the point scoring. But these two, they have been, it has been one of those physical games. Golden DK gets to the free throw line and hits a free throw. DK, just a 27% free throw shooter. Remarkable. It, it's, you don't see that number very often. He gets the first one. Wow. It's actually, in some ways, surprising to see him on the floor at the end of the game because if this game did get closer, certainly the Terriers would have the option to foul him. With the Euro step, Javante can't hit it. Boy, did he want that one as Javante, again, break the pressure, be aggressive. That's what Joe Jones has asked them to be, and that was part of the game plan. So, no, you're saying, oh, was that a quick shot? You're breaking the pressure. Cam Spencer inside, and don't go away just yet. It's down to 10. Well, it always is. And, you know, Loyola, they're not going to foul right now either. They're trying to get another stop. So this game is not just going to end with the clock. The Terriers are going to have to put some work in here and close this out as, once again, these, this game, the offense has been easier to come by here in the second half. McCoy guarded by Andrews. Finds Walter White. And after a second to think about it, he drills the three. What a game for Walter. He's got 17, his third three of the night. He was right from the get-go. He was so aggressive from the start. And again, that kind of set the tone for the Terriers, looking for a leader on the floor. And Walter White set the precedent, and all the Terriers have followed since. 13-point BU lead, a minute 15 to play in this one. Kenny Jones drains wow. the three, falling into his bed. Season comes to a close, losing in Hamilton, New York. Inbounds pass, tipped out of bounds by DK, who was draped over Souk Matone. So Ameri Fletcher Tynan will try it again. The, the game the Terriers are interested in, American and Navy, that's a six-point game down in the last 90 seconds of that one. Tynan gets it into Harper. He's doubled, and there's a reach in by Jackson, who just came in, and he fouled. Fletcher Tynan right on the right hand, and Fletcher flexing that hand. And well, that's where you get that as well as the ball jammed against it as Fletcher Tynan trying to work that out before he gets to the free throw line. We always joke that all injuries seem to just disappear when you have the ball in your hand right. off on the offensive end. So Fletcher trying to get two more here. He had a bucket early on in the first half. But we mentioned the foul trouble in the early going, played through it and had himself a very productive second half. And then this Loyola team ends up under 50% from the field. It didn't look like it was going to finish that way, but the Terriers, the defense, they were able to get stops. And the Terrier pace just seems to wear teams down. I know we've talked about that before, and Loyola down the stretch just could not match point for point. Fletcher Tynan hits both. He has four points in the game now, and BU leading by a dozen as we enter the final minute of this Patriot League quarterfinal here at the roof. Kenny Jones with the back door to Spencer. How many times have they done that tonight? And just after I compliment Fletcher Tynan for being help on the defensive end, that one he let Spencer go. As the Terriers, once again, the problem with the inbound is that's where things scary can happen. Harper gets rid of it though, fighting through the defense and Walter White is ahead of the field for two more. A beat the press and look to score. Uh, this is not about the clock. This is just you're trying to beat the pressure right now. 40 seconds to go. This crowd ready to celebrate a BU victory. Spencer with a tough fall away. That's an air ball. Fletcher Tynan goes down hard on the floor, and he looks shaken up. Oh, he's had a rough last minute, so he, he may get some treatment by the end of this one. By the way, it was good to see Walter White come back after he went to the, the table. Standing ovation from this crowd here at the roof. BU cannot run out the clock on this possession, but they're going to advance to the Patriot League semifinals. The Terriers will not shoot on this particular possession. 
BU with their 11th home win of the season. They'll improve to 11 and four here at the roof this season in what will most likely be their final game here at the roof. Obviously things can happen. <laughs> the inbounds pass and that will do it. This quarterfinal game goes to the Terriers.